Hey guys, Sharpen here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn marimba symbols like these into evolving marimba pads like these. So this sound is another request I got, and in order to recreate that, I chose to split it into a pluck sound, a swelling sound, and a bass sound. So for the pluck and the swelling sound, you can use a marimba one-shot sample, you can use a marimba contact library, but you can also synthesize these with convincing results. So I'm going to show you how to create it using both methods. So for the pluck sound, what I made is a very simple patch. It uses one oscillator that has uh, a marimba wavetable. Basically, this is a wavetable that has a lot of high-end content at the start. And as it progresses, it only becomes a sine wave. So if we scroll through it really fast using LFO1, we get this sort of clicky attack tone of the marimba, but the sustain of the sine wave. Like that. I'm going to slow down the speed of LFO1 so you can hear the high end at the start of the wavetable a bit better. And once we change the LFO speed to be really fast, we only get the click instead. So for the volume envelope, there's a decay time of 1.5 seconds, 0 sustain, and the release of 1 second. In addition to that, there's some delay in reverb, and if you change the um, mode of the LFO from envelope to trigger, you get a sort of a delay effect. Because what happens is that you keep cycling through um, the wavetable, which causes this sort of clicky sound to repeat over and over. But since we have no sustain and there is only uh, decay, uh, the volume of it goes down so that it really sounds like a delay. If you want to recreate that using a sample, you can do that as well. I'm going to be using a glockenspiel sample as an example. It sounds like this. And what you want to do is to make sure that your envelope has sustain all the way up and a long release time. Now inside the piano roll, in order to recreate that delay effect, what you want to do is to make sure that you create a pattern like this one that has its velocity going down. And then once you repeat it, uh, you get multiple notes. So here's an example. And without the release time, uh, it sounds pretty dry. So that's why you want to keep it at a pretty long uh, rate. So now for the uh, swell sound. Uh, this is exactly the same patch as the marimba plug. The only difference is that I'm adding some attack time. So here's how it would sound without the attack time. And here's how it sounds with it. And you can also do the same thing with a one-shot sample or with a contact library. All you need to do is to just add some attack time to the volume envelope. Like that. So now that you have uh, these main sounds, what you want to do is to set in the piano roll uh, some notes for them. Uh, I chose the notes of the chord B minor, which is B, D, and F sharp. And I split, I split it across two different octaves, like this. You want to make sure that each note has its time to ring out and that it, they are playing separately. So the same thing goes for the swell sound. It plays the same chords, chord. And then what I did is I rendered those two uh, into audio. Here's the pluck sound. And here's the swelling sound. And then what you want to do is to load them into a granular synthes synthesizer, like this one. Right now it sounds like this. Um, and once you add a couple of changes, it gets really interesting. So for these changes, what you want to add is uh, random to be set it all the way up, which means that it's going to play backward and forward from random places. Uh, and sometimes uh, it will put two, two notes on top of each other and stuff like that. You want to make sure that loop is set on so that the sound will repeat itself. 
And then you want to play with the green spacing and the attack time to get the speed that you want it to be at. So this is way too fast and if we um, increase the attack time it's going to go slower. And the green spacing can increase the speed. Now I'm going to increase the hold on the transients and the hold here so that we have slightly more sustained sounds. Something like that. So I'm going to do the same thing for the swearing sound, which is right here. I'm going to set the random all the way up. I'm going to set it to loop. And I'm going to change the attack time. Something like that. So altogether it sounds like this. Not too impressive, so that's why we're adding some more effects. We're adding some delay that only repeats like three times. As you can see, the feedback is set pretty low. We're adding some room reverb mixed at 20% in, and we're removing some of the very high frequencies. So right now it sounds like this, which is way more subtle. Uh, which is fitting for our pad sound, and then we're adding a lot of reverb. Uh, here's a 12 second reverb, and followed by it, there's a 10 second reverb as well. Both of these are on 100% mix. And basically, what you want to do is to send uh, your main uh, input uh, output to the reverb bus, but also to the main bus without all of the reverb. So you get a mix of both of these uh, dry and wet signals like this. Now once we have uh, the basic sound we can also add a bass which is a very simple patch. It's just a triangle wave with some chorus and it has a long attack time like this. It's fairly low in volume because usually marimbas don't have a very strong bass tone. So I'm going to keep it like that. And then altogether it sounds like this. So one more thing that you can add to make it a bit more interesting and sort of mysterious sounding is to add some um, high frequency content that isn't too sharp. So that is what I did. I took the plucked um, audio, which is this one. And I blurred it a lot, so that it sounds more like this. Basically, what blurring does is that uh, it, sort of, it sort of smudges the audio all over the place. So it sounds like it's being reverbed. And here's the result of that. And then I sent it to the reverb channel as well. And on top of that I added some plain ambience to also give us some high frequency content. It's uh, pretty low in volume in the back so it just adds a tiny bit of uh, mids and high end content but not too much. And then once you play all of these together it should sound like this. That is pretty much it. I'll put a download link in the description below to the plain ambient sample used in this video. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the description below what subject you want me to cover up next time.